Okay. So, uh, ready for our next uh, session, uh, which is going to be about pure optimization and pure optimization to pitch a meal. And EJ Chen will give the talk. Yeah, thanks. So, it's a joint work with Roy Tiao, who I think was not here. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it's, as Russell said, uh, I'm just putting the second talk at first. So, <laughs> yeah, but I, I'll still cover the first one. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, first, I'm going, so here's today's plan. First, I'm going to give a teaser about what we'll see today. And then I'll try to talk about some background on the randomization, like the, so the written approach of using targeted PRG instead of PRGs. For doing generalization, PRG here stands for pseudo random generator. I'll define them. And then I'll talk about uh, a framework of constructing targeted PRG via instance wise hardness to randomness connection, which, will, which is going to be very useful when, when you apply them to interactive proofs. Then I'll talk about all results in more detail. And then we'll, we'll finally, I will get to the proof. Hopefully. So, so some teaser. So we're going to talk about something called like free launch generalization of all constant run doubly efficient proof system. It's okay if you don't know what it means, but I will define them pretty soon. But if you know, then essentially we show that assuming strong but complexity favor assumptions, all constant run t time, t time means the verifier time, doubly efficient proof systems can be converted to a t to the one plus epsilon time NP type argument system. By NP type, I mean the, that's no interaction and the verifier is, is deterministic with a very small blow up in preference. In particular, you can apply it to the constant round version of GKR and also the triple R um, uh, double efficient proof systems. So that's almost no overhead, regardless of the number of rounds, as long as, as, long as it's constant. So the key idea here is actually we apply targeted PRGs to a current transcript to reduce the, both the randomness and the interaction of the verifier. So very much like Fiat Shamir, but, uh, but with a very different analysis. I'll, I'll discuss this in detail later. Uh, compared to the previous talk, argument you mean uniform sum? Sum is against uniform algorithm. Uh, yes, I would define that. Yeah, the one I get to the precise famous. So, so here is a very interesting corollary. So, if you apply what I said to the constant run sum check protocol, then under the same hypothesis for all epsilon constant epsilon. That's a verifier that gets an n bit formula of subaxial size runs in two to the epsilon n time. And first, it accepts some that's correct proof, which makes it output the correct, the correct number of satisfying alignment of the n bit formula. Second, for every two to the o n time prover or, or adversary, the probability that, that the prover, the, the fake prover comes up with a, uh, a formula and that wrong proof is very small. So, this, so in, in some sense, we are refuting the non deterministic ETH, but only for like an average case notion of arguments. Okay. There's a probability in the, like it's in the, is it in the verifier? Oh, the probability is in, so it's in the, so well, the verifier is completely deterministic. Yeah. So the probability here is just for this P. So P can be, P. yeah, P can be randomized. This only makes the statement stronger. Yeah. Of course, you can also talk about deterministic P. Yeah. Okay. So this is the key but before I begin to describe my result, I want to say a bit about why that generalization have anything to do with Fiat Shamir at all. So a quick answer is, uh, well, why not? <laughs> <laughs> but, but more seriously, if you think about it, I mean, you want to replace a random oracle by an explicit hash function, right? This is, I mean, if you think about it, this is very similar to generalization, or maybe it's, it is generalization. 
Of course, you are not getting a complete normalization in many applications, but you are really reducing the, the amount of randomness by a lot. Second, secondly, like a more technical reason is that if you can actually make your proof system or argument system deterministic, then automatically you can remove the interaction because if your verifier is already deterministic, then you can then the prover can always just send the whole transcript. Then that's no interaction. So if you can do generalization, you get rid of the runs of interactive interactive interaction automatically. This is just some straightforward application of proof proof system. The definition of proof system. Okay, so. Another thing I want to, uh, before I start, I want to talk about what does complexity favor assumptions means. So, roughly speaking, uh, it, uh, the, the assumptions speak about the existence of a function that, that is hard in a certain sense. So, it's, it's not really about a specific hard function like factoring or learning with error, but the more, more or less about that it is about a certain function that is hard in, a, in some sense. So, it's pretty general. And second, the running time of the hard function is slightly larger than the running time of the adversary. So this is usually what, what you mean when you talk, they talk about complexity region. In a crypto PRG, the running time of the PRG is much smaller than the adversary. You mean the running time in the hard direction of the hard function? If you have something like a one-way function, you mean the inversion is slightly. It's, slightly no, it's not the one. Or it's not the the conditions exist from start here. Yes, think of this as a or is it, moderately hard function. Like no, not moderately hard, but the, the computing the PRG is more expensive than the. But, than but, the it, but it's really some property that is satisfied uh, by a random function. You see on Finally, so as far as we know, it does not seem to imply one-way functions. So unlike most of the crypto assumptions. So uh, yes, yeah, so for example, consider that crypto PRG printing one bit one. If, you, if I give you a string, evaluate, evaluate the PRG takes like polynomial time, so the adversary can run in arbitrary polynomial time. So the adversary is, is stronger than the entity which runs the PRG. And that's what I mean. Okay, so now let's move to some background on randomization. So, so the, the, the key concept of this talk is something called targeted PRG, which in some time you are trying to produce pseudo randomness from the input Instead of the instead of from the thin air, so let me recall the definition of pseudo random generators. Let's say you have a circuit uh, of an um, n-size circuit on n-bit input. I, I generate a PRG G is going to have a small state length, and uh, if you look at all possible outputs, so so S one to S m is an enumeration of all possible seeds. So all the strings from zero one to the log m. So log m is the seed length. And the, the generator does not depend on circuit C and the, we want it to fool every small circuit C. So in other words, the accepting probability for every small circuit C over the uniform input, the uniform n-bit input is very close to the accepting probability of C over the pseudo random outputs. That's uh, the standard definition of the random generator. So a targeted PRG is very similar to a PRG, except for one thing. Um, the generator actually now depends on C. So it, it looks at C and then outputs some pseudo random outputs. And, uh, and uh, now you kind of have a different quantification. It says that for every small c, g sub c fools the circuit c. So again, you, the, the requirement is essentially the same, except for now you have a uh, subscript c here, means g can depend on c. 
Oh, okay, let's do that. So we're relating it to all the results. So in Nissan's here, too, if you look at the targeted version, it has an algorithmic seed size. Yeah. It's not targeted. No, no, but there is this old result of Siva Kumar that uh, observed that you can use uh, Nissan's PRG for derandomization. And I think the high level point was similar that the seed size can be reduced from log squared to logarithmic to allow it to depend on the algorithm. I mean, the function is space version? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, you don't have generalization, you don't have a description of C. How can you? So you need to work with work for every small circuit C, right? So, I mean, if you have this thing. If, the, if M is polynomial, then, then, you, then you already have P equal to DAP, right? Mm -hmm. So you cannot do it until here. So G cannot be just C. <laughs> this is going to output something. Right. And it is for C. So, so the idea is that C is fixed ahead of time, and then you choose the generator. Mm -hmm. uh, input. Okay. I'll, show, I'll show a copy of my algorithms where it's targeted at strategy. So it, now it, I think it will illustrate the point more clear. Let's say you, we have a linear time randomized algorithm with an, in, with an n bit input and also n bit of, of randomness. So given input x, we first construct an n bit or n input circuit C sub x that, that is defined by fixing, fixing the input part of A. So C sub x, it takes n bit of, of randomness and the output, whether A on input X accepts its randomness. Then almost by definition, you just apply G on this new circuit set of X, and then you can enumerate all possible uh, seeds from S1 to Sn. Assuming M is polynomial, then you get what, what you want. Then you can decide whether accept or not by looking at this estimate. So pretty, pretty easy, right? So, so the bottom line is that if you have this targeted PRG, you can show P equals BP. Okay. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. You're not trying to simulate C, you're trying to full C, like C is the distinguishing it from the connections of the right to generate the regime. You cannot fully rely on the generator, you can fully rely on the generator because the generator can run so C takes n bits at C and at n size. G sub C can run in poly n side, poly n time. So just C sub n of course can simulate C. But if you want to full C, so that's 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 a different task than simulating C. Right. Okay. okay, so 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 this is uh, you know, before you can apply target PRG to dramatization. But we really care, what we really care about in this talk is to randomize proof system, proof systems instead of um, algorithms. So now, now let's say we have a proof, standard proof system, an Arthur Merlin type, type proof system, where verifier always sends uniformly random stream. And let's say the first and the random challenge is R sub one. And uh, if we want to replace the truly random first message R sub one by a pseudo random uh, message. Well, first we need to ask ourselves in this, in this setting, what distinguisher or test do we want to fool so that we can ensure the correctness of, our, of the, of the de-randomized proof system, right? So, if you think about it, uh, the, the answer is, is, is the residual value of the protocol or the games or the game. I'll, I'll define it. So 
So more precisely, I'll, I'll try to be able to use a targeted PRG uh, that depends on the input X to generate pseudo random messages, G sub X SI, to replace the first random message. And here I define the R sub X of R as the maximum accept probability of the verifier if you fix the first challenge to be R. Exactly. So then the acceptance probability of the actual protocol is going to be just a uniform, uh, just R sub R, the expectation of R sub X over uniformly random messages. And if you replace that by a output, a pseudo random output of targeted PRG, then then you get the, the value of R sub X over the pseudo random distribution. And you really want this two to be close, right? So R sub X is going to be the, the test or distinguisher you want to fool here. It's actually a real valued uh, distinguisher, but you can play some trick to make a Boolean value. But let's say it's a, it's a real valued one for now. So, so for the first message, we wish the output of T sub X to fool this residual value at of X. Yeah. Does R of X depend on the particular prover or that like? Uh... Uh, so, okay, so we, so we first, we, we fix, uh, no, 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 R of X does not depend on the particular prover. It's the maximum X probability. Oh, so, all provers, the maximum. Yeah, is yeah, 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 yes, yes. So, so that's not efficient to compute for R. Um, it depends on the, it depends on the proof on the proof system. For some check, I think it is. Uh, yeah, for general as a morning, probably not. Yeah, not yeah, actually. So, so unlike the previous case, now you don't know exactly what's sitting inside the proof. You don't know exactly how uh, the proof I think uh, you only have a limit, let's say, time bound on the prover or something. Yeah, the you end up with an argument, but it starts with a proof. Yeah, you start with a proof and end up with an argument. Yeah. So you fix the first message, and then you, I can assume you choose the best and then for that first message. Yeah. 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 So sorry, because when you fix the knowledge of C, that's your name. That's all right. So that's no, no, see, it's all right. That's not the prover. So, so here, say it's just this function out of x. You know its function. This only depends on x. Right. Depends on x and on the best and on the protocol. On x and on the best possible yeah, yeah. prover for this protocol. Yeah, yeah protocol is fixed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, this may not be easily compatible for arbitrary asymmetric proof system. Yes. Good question. Um, is there some inconsistency between R1 and R? Do you mean R1? Since R1 is the first message or? Oh, so, so uh, okay, maybe it's a bad index. So R1 just means the message in the first round. That should be R1, right? Uh, it's it's a general description yeah. for, oh, any R1. R1. for any round. Uh, so, does it? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. okay, so, okay, so maybe, <laughs> let's continue. Uh, so, how about the second message? You can actually try to do the same, but now you want to use that targeted PRG that actually depends on the current transcript. Let's, let's, let's denote TR sub at most one to be the current transcript up to the first round. Then you, the verifier is going to apply a target PRG based on the current transcript to generate another through random message distribution to replace R sub, one, R sub two. Again, here you want to fool the second residual uh, value of the game, which only depends on the current transcript. So now you want to, uh, so after the transcript is fixed, you want to show that the, your second pseudo random um, distribution fools this second residual value of the game. So yeah. Targeted PRG to be efficient given the target, namely given transcript smaller or equal to one, computing G sub transcript 
it's efficient. Yes, of course. Yeah, otherwise the variable cannot run it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's not. It's like we should think of it as input, not really as a subscript. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's an input. It, yeah, it's, it's an input. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm just trying to make it more looks yeah, better. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> so therefore, we need the new targeted PRT to fool the second residual value, and you and you can keep doing this. So for every round t, you apply a targeted PRG to generate the pseudo random message at the round t, and then you apply it. Uh, the, the target PRG takes the current transcript as the input. So finally, this is going to reduce the total randomness of V to C times S sub G. So C is the number of rounds, S sub G is the C length of the target PRG. The protocol can then be made non interactive and deterministic with a blow up of 2 to the C times S sub G. You can, you can simply enumerate all possible randomness. And the, the, the prover is just going to send you the strategy, the whole strategy tree. So, so we'll actually make S sub G sub logarithmic. Therefore, the whole blow up is small. Is it? I don't understand. How do you know there exists a targeted G for this residual function, which might not even be computable? Oh, that's a. Uh, we will, we'll, of course, you need to assume some kind of assumption, right? But you will construct it for specific protocols or? Uh, well, I guess I can wait and see. Yeah, I will. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll yeah. yeah, I think the precise kind of assumption depends on the protocol, uh, depends on class of the protocol. Are you aiming to that for the first part be something close to linear time? Do you need the runtime G close to linear? Oh, uh, I, uh, yes, yes. Which means that you need for the computation from the previous slide to also be close to linear. Uh, uh, yes. 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 It's, 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 it's a good system for NPIC and you use collision resistance for hashing the Generically, make the very part time. Let's see, it has to be shorter. Now we have a new end station. It doesn't automatically assume. Suppose you're okay with assuming collision. Then you can do KDN and all kinds of stuff. Right? No, no. But it's not okay. 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 They're not like that. But, uh, right? No, but I assume no, no, there is a derandomization version of that. But why would the, but the prover would be more expensive? For the new, just by pulling off. Why? Now making statements on much shorter screen. Okay, I don't know if this is compatible with this. Okay, let's take it off. Yeah, we have great talks for the inspired discussion. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. sorry. Uh, but maybe let's compare it with uh, the original Flash and Mirror, and uh, let me see a bit. Um, What's different and uh, what's similar? So in, in a fair shamir random oracle version of the fair shamir protocol, you just replace the actual random message by a pseudo random message in some sense, uh, which is a uniformly random oracle, and uh, on the applied to the transcript. So one can instantiate this random oracle by an explicit correlation intractable hash function uh, with a key. So here, the hash function comes with a random key that is sent by the verifier at the beginning. So in our approach, actually, that's no random key sent at, at the beginning. Uh, the, but the, we allow some small amount of randomness per round. And after collapsing the round by enumerating all possible randomness, V is actually made deterministic. So, uh, so if you apply correlation in charge of a hash function, you actually get an Arthur Merlin type of uh, um, proof system, but here is that more like more like an NP type argument system. So, if I understand correctly, you're now talking about the general paradigm. But is this how different is it from like other previous results about the randomizing interactive uh, complexity classes, like uh, right AM and things like this? They also, yeah, they, this already studied in the. They all use PRG, not targeted PRG. Sorry. They all use PRG. So, you, well, you first do uh, you first uh, compress the rounds and then just use the PRG one. 
Uh, uh, yes. I see. So like, so before there was no case where people had to sort of be randomized and multi-round uh, um, multi protocol, um, sort of by doing it uh, one round at a time. Uh, I think you can do that too in the previous approach, but they don't really buy you anything. <coughs> I, I'll show you why. Like you, you use PRT, right? Like, they don't really help you. Oh, if I do it one by one, one, one by one, one round by one round. And uh, it's actually the it's actually by making yourself tiny in a PRG, that's a way to get some agreement system which are much faster with a much faster pool of time, a very fire time. Yeah. I guess we're not talking about results here, we're talking about definitions, right? Like what kind of pseudo random generator do you need in order to de randomize like this in interactive process, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what yeah. That that is well studied. But they but if you use if you use PRG, then you cannot get a very efficient uh, the means argument. You can only get something with a big number yeah, You cannot get sub <coughs> you, you cannot get like it's impossible to get, or people. I, don't know what to get. Uh, I mean, you cannot prove it's impossible, but uh, it, it seems so, impossible. So, what is different than the blueprint that you described? That you use the targeted. Yes. Uh, yes, okay. yes. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. So, so yeah. this is you're saying. Okay. Now let's think of the targeted. Uh, uh yeah. notion in the context of an interactive. Uh, yeah, 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 yes, yes. It's more like fashion, yeah, actually. Yeah. So you're not talking about randomization as in BPP to P, right? That's not you go always in your goal. Yeah, yeah, you are trying to randomize a uh, no uh, proof system into a and so a randomized proof system into a deterministic proof system. That's what that's uh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's an empty type argument actually. So it's you have to convert randomized proof system into empty type argument. I don't you have to minimize the overhead. So our point is so the number of time. So 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 the mystic argument was different. Uh yes, so I'm so it was that thing, empty type argument. So uh, okay, okay. Maybe I should uh uh, that's a quick question of that. I think I'm running a little bit of time. <laughs> All right, so uh, I, I don't want to uh, talk a bit about the techniques behind the hardness versus the randomness framework. So the classical hardness versus the randomness framework by Nissan Wilson and in fact, the Wilson, they usually you assume hardness of a single output function f against non uniform circuits. Then you construct a PRG G to the F. So G depends on F that fools all small circuits. So behind the scene, what's really happening is that constructive contact positive of what you want, what you want. So they actually show that the, this G, sub, G to the F is accompanied with a small reconstruction <laughs> oracle circuit R to the D such that given any oracle that is not fooled by this PRG, this reconstruction oracle circuit, given its uh, distinguisher, let's call it, it computes F exactly. So if you, if you look at, so if G to the F does not fool some small circuit, you just plug in the small circuit to this R, you will get a small circuit for F. So that contradicts your hardness assumption. So therefore, this uh, constructive contract positive of the statement you want uh, gives you a PRT construction starting from a hard function. So, so in a written work. So, so sorry, hmm? even though I'm going to slow down, I want to understand. Are you saying that there's something different here in this constructive contrapositive than the kind of arguments we've used in the past? Uh, so this is the oh this is the, the classical one. I'm just reviewing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, it's there. So I, I, can you see the okay. title? Okay. That's no instance. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So okay. So the first new thing. So so this one gives you PRG, but we want targeted PRG, of course. So so what do we do? Essentially, you assume now you assume hardness of a multi output function f, so let's say f maps n bits to n bits or n bits to n to epsilon bits against uniform algorithms on a particular input z. This gives you a target PRG 
G to the F. So G depends on F. And uh, G also takes Z as the input. That forces all uh, small, small uniform algorithms on input Z. So by small, let's say the uniform algorithm runs in T time, then the generator maybe runs in poly T time or T to the one plus epsilon time. So how do we, so how do you get this? So um, maybe a better way to, I mean, a particular input sounds uh, a little bit hard to formalize. A better way to formalize this is uh, you can think about distributions, right? So if you have a hard, if you have a hardness of multi output function F against uniform algorithm over input from a particular distribution D, then this gives you a targeted PRG that forces all uniform algorithms over input from this, from this the same distribution D. So that's a precise translation between the hardness distribution and the distribution that you can de-randomize. So, how do, so how, do, how do you get this type of very tight connection between hardness and the pseudo-randomness? So we'll have an instance-wise constructive counterpositive, such that this packet PRG, again, is accompanied with a small reconstruction oracle algorithm that satisfies the following. The algorithm takes Z as input. So for any oracle that is not fooled by this targeted PRG with input Z, this reconstruction algorithm given an oracle as, uh, given the distinguisher as oracle computes F on Z. So therefore, if G to the F on input Z, does not fool a fast uniform algorithm A on input Z, F of Z can be computed by a fast algorithm defined by you replacing this uh, oracle, the oracle here by A fixing Z as input. Right. And, then you, and here, I'm, I mean, I'm doing things on in, uh, input, input per input level. So you can think about distribution. So if, the, if G to the F does not fool uh, uniform algorithm over some distribution, then it can be computed on that distribution. Okay, is this clear? So when you say that the A will put A, it's to input one is oh. random structure. Oh, yes, yes, so yes. So a uniform random algorithm, uniform you want to de-randomize a uniform random algorithm. A takes two inputs, X, Z, and R. So this is the input, I is the randomness. And the, the, the targeted PRG, if you want to uh, de-randomize A on input Z, you, you fix the input, the first as Z, and you plug in the pseudo-random outputs as the second input. So A, A with Z fixed is the, the distinguisher you want to fool here. This actually depends on Z or does not depend on Z? Yes, yes, it depends on Z. I think here, I didn't write it, but it depends on Z, yes. <laughs> I think this is the most important uh, technical takeaway of the, the new framework. So essentially, uh, I mean, it's fine to forget this, but uh, the point is that you have a, a, a translation of hardness to pseudo randomness preserve the hard distribution and it actually works input per input. If your function is hard on input <laughs> Z, your generation works on input Z. Which if this is the most important point, can you like repeat the trick the trick again please? Mm -hmm. Can you re repeat the trick again? Like what's the key takeaway? You said something oh. was a key takeaway. So so here you have a translation for hardness to the randomness such that if your function f is hard on input uh, on some input that the generation works on the same input. So, sorry, when you say that it's hard for uniform algorithms, it's uniform yeah. algorithms in some projects, yeah. right? Yeah, so let's say the F runs in T to the one plus epsilon time, uniform algorithm runs in T time, so there's some separation. Okay, so 
So this part, they only consider, so in the, the, the original paper only consider targeted PRGs for uniform algorithms. So we really need targeted PRG that for interactive proofs. So we need to adapt the one of their construction, or one of our construction to the setting of interactive proofs. Mm -hmm. If it was this maximum over all prover messages, so that kind of you need a the like a target that kind of yes, yes, yes. So you need a stronger hardness assumption. Yes, but the key is that you, you can have an instance wise transformation between hardness and redness. <coughs> you're, you're supposed to get a correctness on all cases. How, how do you get worst case correctness? Oh, um, we we'll actually get uh, correctness uh, over any polynomial time sampleable distribution. I, I, I'll show you definition next. Okay, so, so now it's, uh, so, so, so now after reviewing all the background generalization, uh, so in this talk, we'll be focusing on argument systems. So there are proof systems in which only efficient algorithms are allowed to enter. So the verifier is very efficient in the sense that the verifier takes quasi linear time in the input length, let's see. And the completeness is attained by a polynomial time prover. And the soundness is against every polynomial time adversary. So that's the definition of um, an <coughs> argument system. Uh, yes, yes. I'll, I'll show the precise definition. So, so, uh, so, 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 in previous work, they study uh, doubly efficient proof systems for both a problem in P or problem in NP. And uh, but in, in those previous work, the verifier, they are, they are always randomized, but very fast. So here, so in this talk, we'll, 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 um, we'll study an NP type of argument system where the, the verifier is actually deterministic. Um, we can study it for both problems in P or problems in NP, but let's focus on problems in P in this talk. So the precise definition of what so we we'll, we'll about doubly efficient proof system. So here, a language has a doubly efficient uh, interactive proof system of time t, if that's a t time verifier and a polynomial time, polynomial t time prover such that if x is in L, then this honest prover can convince verifier with probability one. And, uh, and if x is not in L, then for every, uh, for every prover, uh, even unbounded one, the probability of the p prime accept convinced v is small. So we we'll, so we we'll relax the definition in in two ways. So first, we we'll, we we'll, we actually allow unnoticeable error in the sense that in the soundness case, now we only assume for every polynomial t time randomized adversary, they cannot come up with a bad input and a proof such that it a, it a trick the verifier into believing a false statement. So here, the, the adversary is uniform. They, it, it cannot generate a, a bad input and a bad proof such that x is not in L, and somehow we believe the answer is yes. Is, is, is it, is it, so, so there are two uh, ways that, that we make relaxation. First, you uh, make information theoretical soundness to you know, computational. Second, you also make the, it's an average case notion. This average case notion is kind of inherent once you talk about uniform GT groups. Uh, yes, because if you, Allow non uniform adversary, you can always make the, like the adversary hardwire yeah, was input, input, something like that. Yeah. 
yeah so 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 our precise theorem states that under a Hannes assumption we'll see later for every constant c uh, con and a polynomial time t constant c round doubly efficient inductive proof system can be de randomized into a uh, effect can be can be randomized with a small overhead so here we remote remove both the randomness and also the round number of the rounds and uh, as a corollary uh, so so now let's remind you of the so as a very very quick corollary you can apply what i said to the sum check protocol uh, for sharp set to get this thing i showed you at the beginning of the of the talk yeah you can also apply this to uh, the constant round version of gkr and the and also the triple up uh, uh, system for uh, bounded space delegation The protocol, okay? To verify first message is to be random. So what would be the randomness that you would do this? If you are a targeted, uh, you know it of the source, you just feed it the input, what do you do? Also, you first reduce, reduce the randomness to, to very small. Yeah. Then, assuming the randomness is very small, the, the, the poor can just send a strategy function, right? So, you, you, then, it, it just, you, then, then, then it just becomes deterministic. Oh, I'm just saying, suppose the total randomness is only like a, like a S bits, and then a proof at the beginning can just enumerate all possible randomness. So you're going through all possible, yeah. Yes, yes. yes. So the key point is you have to make the randomness very small. Yeah. Otherwise, it doesn't work. OK, so now let's get to the, the proof overview. Uh, OK, so, so before talking about the real proof, I do want to talk about why PRG doesn't work? Because I mean, I, because so we, we are trying trying something new. So we I, I have to justify why the previous you know a, a, a standard approach using PRG doesn't work. So the first attempt to randomize the the interactive pool system is just you use that PRG at each turn, right? So this can of course reduce the the amount of randomness. But if, if you think about it, you realize the Distinguisher here is the residual value of the game. And the residual value of the game depends on the current transcript. That can be total t bits of the transcript. So that can be two to the t many distinguisher. You, you want to fool them all. This actually means you really have to pay log t seed at each round. This, this is too much. You don't, you, 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 you don't want to pay log t seed at each round because then if you have say round, the, the, total, uh, the total number of, of randomness is say times log t. You want something sub-logarithmic. Sub so you, you don't want to use a PRG. So, okay, but, but the next, if you think about it, then you, then you, then you can say, okay, but uh, in fact, we, we, we don't have to for every possible transcript, right? The, because in our definition, the transcript, including the input, is always sampleable from a polynomial time, polynomial t time distribution. So perhaps we can just apply a PRG that fools uh, our po polynomial t time algorithm. Uh, this also doesn't work because we are in the complexity region, and if you want to fool poly t time algorithms, you have to pay. Also, you also have to pay omega at least log tc. So, so PRG doesn't really work. Of course, you, you cannot prove they, uh, they rigorously they don't work because that probably implies some level, but, but uh, just straightforwardly, they, 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 they don't seem to work. So if you think about it, the, so why, we, why, why the PRG doesn't work is because Essentially, if you use a PRG, the PRG does not know the transcript. You want, you want a single pseudon generator that fools all possible, that works against all possible transcripts. That's too much to hope for. 
So the previous slide would have been chosen for a totally inefficiently computable PRG. Uh, yes. Uh, is that the case? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So here, it's, the problem is, is not, not about the city, it's about the running time of the PRG. Yeah. Because we are in a complex region, the running time is actually slightly larger than polity. Yeah. So the solution here is that we, just, we, we, not, we use a targeted PRG that gets a specific transcript as explicit input. And then we force the residual value of the gain for that particular transcript. We don't attempt to and a single PRG that forced uh, the rest of value for every possible transcript. That, that's just too much. We really want to be more specific and uh, work with the current uh, transcript. So target PRG now knows the current transcript. And so now let's get to the proof. So of course, I, I need to simplify things a bit so that I can have time to cover, the, <laughs> cover something interesting. So, We'll first assume the verifier only use like R to the N to the little O1 coins. This, 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 this is true for the sum check protocol because you only toss a small amount of coins there. And second, and so this showcase the main idea and suffices for the shark set application. The general case, you, you actually first apply uh, some additional high of assumption to reduce the amount of randomness from T to, to N to the little O1. Then you can apply this uh, simplify. Uh, you, you can go. You can work with the simplified setting. So we assume the number of randomness per round is small, and we are, and stay here is a constant. Uh, how many? How many? So the building block here is that. So we first we assume we have a hard function. It maps the transcript. The T bit that's transcript Z to poly R many bits. So R is the number of, of R is the sub polynomial, it's the number of randomness per round. And the F from T to T bits to K bits is computable in T times poly K, K time, deterministically. And it's hard for, a lo for some lower time. And we'll see the required property in a moment. And then the construction. What we'll do is that we'll apply the Nissan Wilson generator with the f of z as the hard choose table, and our targeted PRG is just going to be the so on input on transcript z you get f of z, then you apply Nissan Wilson to get uh, some pseudo random outputs. The point is that f sub z is only poly po, is only poly r bits. I is n to the little o1. So, so here you only have n to the little o1 many outputs. So then we need to, then I need to talk about what is the property of this construction. So uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to the, go, go, go give you the proof, but the the only thing we need is that assume that each bit of f is computable in time t prime, then there exists a construction algorithm such that it runs in k time k to the little k to the 0 0.001 times t prime time, such that for every distinguisher that breaks this this um, generator, you the reconstruction with the oracle as a distinguisher can compute an approximate version of f sub of f of z. So here the randomness is over i from 1 to k, and also the random random coins used by the reconstruction algorithm. So in some sense it says that if the oh I, I should show you actually. So this shows that if the if it's hard to print an approximate, approximate version of the entire string f of z in time k to the 0 0.001 times t prime with oracle access to a distinguisher, think about it as the residual value of the game, then the targeted PRG on z works.
So because we have a reconstruction, we just plug in the residual value as the distinguisher. The proof, the proof idea is that you, you use the reconstruction of impact as a Wittison as a learning algorithm. Then you can learn a small choice table of f of z, and then you can evaluate this small choice table, but I'm not going to uh, talk about it in detail. You can check the, this is some standard stuff in complexity, but you can check all proof for more details, or paper for more details. Okay, so. Uh, okay. It actually requires setting up some oracle. Uh, and that's a big oracle, no? Uh, yes, yeah, so the, the time check is kind of strong. Also, it, it depends. So if you work with the sum check protocol, then it is kind of committable. Uh, I mean, kind of in poly time, in some sense. But if you work with general protocol, then. Yeah, for a general answer learning, this may not be committable. So like the, 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 the assumption will not be falsifiable. Yeah, but if you work with some check or something with, with doubly, doubly efficient uh, delegation system, then it's, it's going to be falsifiable. Yeah. But it could be tensely, it could be false, also, right? It could be two systems, which is false. Uh, but there is no function that is. Uh... Yeah, I don't know that example. So the. Because the residual value is much bigger than the original. Yeah, but the residual value, I mean, the run, the, it's probably. Uh, it's, it's different. So, for example, the running time of your function is, is t to the one class epsilon, and the residual value is only computable by a t time as a morning protocol. It's unclear how do you use a t time as a morning protocol to compute a t, t to the one class epsilon time general algorithm. So, of course, the as a morning might, might give you some advantage, but it's unclear how do you use that speed up computation to, to generically. Yeah, when is that offline? Just you say for the sharp set? The hardest is some force set against uh, times of proportional that's exponential in the number of witnesses. What, what do you mean by sharp set result? I mean, you're, you're applying this to a uh, uh, to a uh, interactive proof where the residual does require exponential time. Uh, yes, yes, it requires exponential time, but it also has that. Uh, so you, you, you want to fool the it, it's, it's not a generic exponential time computation. It's something that can be proved with like a, with a uh, with a uh, doubly efficient uh, system with a very efficient verifier. So you have to fool this type of thing. This is a good small space. Hmm? For example, it's small space. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm running out, running out of time. Uh, okay, so. So let's back, get back to the slide. So, so, we, uh, so recall the target PRG is that you, so we apply target PRG to the transcript. The total number of randomness is only C over two times O log, log, log K, where K is the, the output length of the hard function. So how do we make the, so, after applying the PRG, we reduce the number of coins in each round to little o log n. Then we can collapse the protocol to an to MP1 by sending a, a tree of all possible transcripts in advance. So this gives you t times n to little o1 arguments, the means argument system. Yeah. This only takes away the fact that it's constant round? Uh, yes. Yeah, if you, can, if you can somehow use like a correlated uh, random, randomness per round, then actually you can make it for like a more than constant round. Yeah. But, but, but here the analysis seems to really require all the randomness per round to be independent here. But as I said before, this is some, somewhat similar to the five mirror heuristic, where you, instead of a random hash function, you use or correlation intractable hash function, you use targeted PRG. Okay, so uh, finally, let's, uh, so now let's 
be precise about Hanya's assumption. So, so where do transcripts come from in a doubly efficient argument system? So recall that the prover <laughs> needs, to, needs to come up with a bad input and a bad proof. So in, in that sense, the whole transcript of the of the the whole transcript of the argument system is going to be polynomial time sampleable because you can run the bad prover, right? So what we really want is that this high function f is hard with high probability over all polynomial time sampleable distributions. Then with high probability, so, so if you fix a uniform bad prover, then with high probability over the randomness of the bad prover, f is going to be hard on the transcript generated from the interaction. Then you can apply this target PRG to, to, to do the generation. So the residue, the distinguisher, and so you call it the distinguisher is the residue value of the game. And uh, so we then we need the highest assumption to be f is hard over all polynomial time sampleable distribution that is uh, approximately hard to print with the, the residue value of the game given as the oracle. And the, the residue value is a, a real valued function, but you can make it. Uh, Boolean, Boolean by some, by some ma simple manipulation. So finally, to finish the proof, uh, we use a subtle hybrid argument to gradually replace random coins to the random one round by round. And we also need to be careful with the definition of the prover and the, the prover. And, the real, and we also need to transform the real value distinguisher to a Boolean one. I think I'm going to uh, skip that. Okay. okay, so maybe let me, uh, in, the, in the last few minutes, let me uh, go over the open problems. So we talk about argument system that are deterministic and secure only on average. We seem to be, we seem to be new as far as we know. So, and also, they, they seem pretty natural because it's like a natural uh, conventional version of MP. So maybe that can, more can be said about them in general, and then we can study them for more. No, actually, I've been studying for like 20 years almost. OK, OK. It's just called uniform sunless. <laughs> so you, so you need to, the verifier is a bit too big to be deterministic, right? Yeah, you have like non interactive uh, arguments. Uh, and I have this first paper. <laughs> and, uh, and we give a complexity theoretical analysis of Spice Mayer, and this might be interesting <coughs> um, as well. And uh, also, a very interesting open question is that we can get sharp set in this, this deterministic argument with the expansion running time, but can you, can you get it with a polynomial running time? That'd be very interesting. And that seems uh, pretty hard. Finally, all assumptions are a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, ad hoc. So it's very interesting to get a nicer, nicer assumption that uh, imply the same result, or show uh, maybe at least some weaker version of our assumption are necessary. And in general, I think the, the, new, the new framework of using targeted PRG is very interesting. So maybe we can come up with entirely new assumptions that, that give you the required targeted PRG, and then we can use them. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> If there's any hope of uh, reducing your current assumption to the worst case or assumption, what do you mean? Oh, so, I see. I see. I don't know. I think so. I mean, inherently, like you, you talk about those. It seems I, I don't know. I mean, the current proof doesn't really require average case assumption. Yeah, and also in crypto, usually you usually you need at least some average case assumption if you don't have worst case to average case reduction. Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. 
Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, so I was still a little confused. Is computing the PRG that you get, is it faster or slower than computing the residual function? Uh, so if, um, okay, so, so, the, the, so the things that the, the residual value is computable by T time two system, while the time to the PRG is computable by T to the one plus epsilon time algorithm. So the, the time to the PRG is computable in a larger time, but the but also you cannot simulate a system two system in like a general algorithm. So it's like right. it's a so it's, so it's faster computing the resid the func the residual that, that residual function, right? That would be uh, it's like uh, it's it can't be comparable, right? So the running time so because the time to is computable by, by general algorithms, but we study more time. And the residual value is computable by uh, proof system but with a lesser time. Yeah. Sure. But if you compare but, the, the time that you have for yeah. both of these tests, you probably get a speed. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you really want to consider the precise running time, then I think the rest of the rest of the value might be harder to compute. It depends on the, the precise protocol. Okay. So let's take a 30 minute break. Thank you very much.